One of the biggest decisions that people with ALS have to make is the choice between invasive or non-invasive ventilation as they start to lose their capacity to breathe properly. Um, what are the issues that uh, people with ALS have to confront, or the factors that they weigh uh, in, that, in that very challenging decision? Non-invasive ventilation to us means ventilation generally with a mask. Sometimes it's that sip and puff thing, but generally with a mask. There's no tubes or anything going inside the body cavities. Invasive ventilation means uh, a tube of some sort going in the body, and in this situation, it means a tracheostomy. And a tracheostomy is a surgically placed tube that goes at the base of the neck, right in this area, um, permanently. It's a, it's a minor surgery, but it's a major change in uh, lifestyle once you have that. We ask about it and talk about it early on so people can think about it, learn about it, and make a decision. And there's not a right or a wrong decision. And we ask and we encourage people to be proactive about thinking about it and making decisions so we can help them in making their final decision. And no decision is, is set in stone. Um, all decisions can be adjusted later. And I have a lot of patients who say uh, early in the disease, well, if, if, if I need a trach right now, I'll do a trach right now, but I want to reserve the option that if my quality of life changes, I can change my mind. And we tell them, absolutely, even after you have a tracheostomy, if you change your mind, you have the option of not having it. So there, it's not a one-way decision. What are the factors that go into making that decision? I think uh, one of the most important factors is quality of life. If quality of life is still good, people are probably going to want to continue on. And if it requires a tracheostomy and generally 24-hour-a-day uh, care and ventilation with a machine, they're going to want to do that. But if the quality of life is deteriorated in their mind uh, because of mobility, because of uh, uh, nutrition, feeding, uh, communication, all those are big issues that go into the decision. If communication is difficult, is usually swallowing is gone, usually speech is gone, um, and mobility is usually gone, um, a lot of people say, I don't want that life, so I don't want to have a tracheostomy. And in fact, somewhere between... 90 and 95% of patients finally decide they do not want a tracheostomy. But a big, big issue really is um, care, care requirements. Uh, when you have a tracheostomy, you need 24-7 caregivers, and they have to be awake. So um, it's, it's not something that you, your spouse can do. Uh, the spouses generally can, can do much of the care of patients with ALS 24-7 uh, um, with some help, obviously, but um, once they have a tracheostomy, it means other people helping out. Um, and if it's going to be in the home, that's very, very expensive. Uh, some insurances cover some of it, uh, some of them cover more. Many insurances cover essentially none of it um, in terms of the person at the bedside for the night shift or whatever. So it can be extraordinarily expensive. So all those things go into it, and that's part of, part of what, why the multidisciplinary team is helpful. The social worker knows about the insurance issues. Uh, the nurses have experience with many other patients who've been through that. Uh, the respiratory therapists understand the, the equipment needs. Uh, the physical therapist can talk about the, uh, uh, the joints and muscles and, and dysfunction there. So it's, it's a group decision, a group advice. It sounds like uh, the typical person with ALS is, is not only relying on the care team for advice and consultation, but the caregiver, the primary caregiver at home, um, is going to be heavily affected by this as well. Is that your, your experience? Is that tends to be a joint decision? In fact, in some ways, it has more effect on the caregiver than it does on the patient. Um, the, the caregiver, if they're, if they're doing a much of that care, is, uh, has a totally different lifestyle than they would otherwise. So it's, it is something that's really important to have both the patient and the primary caregiver. And that primary caregiver may, may be more the coordinator of all the other caregivers, um, but it's, it's, gonna, it's a big, big job. It's an enormous job. What are the benefits of a tracheostomy? Well, the main benefit of a tracheostomy for ALS patients is prolonging life. Um, it's generally not recommended until uh, everything else has been tried for uh, breathing, and um, 
uh, with a tracheostomy, people can live many, many years. They may not be able to move their arms and legs, may not be able to speak or swallow, but they can live for a long time and communicate by other means, their eyes and computers and things like that. So that's the main advantage. The other advantages are it gives us access to the lower airway. So if, if saliva and other things in the mouth are going down the wrong pipe, which they do frequently with ALS patients, it's easy to get down there and suction it out. It's very hard to suction it out through the mouth once it gets down into the windpipe. So that's the other advantage. How long can I wait uh, on the decision, uh, or at least considering uh, the pros and cons of a decision to have invasive ventilation? You can wait a long time, but we prefer you to make a decision earlier rather than later. And that's because there's two ways to have a tracheostomy. One is elective, meaning, okay, your doctor says it's time and you're in agreement and uh, you say, okay, I want to do it and we arrange for it next week or next month. People who do it that way come through it much quicker, much easier, less complications, um, and it's done. Other people don't make a decision, and this is, this is their, their decision. They can't make a decision, and if they can't make a decision one way or another, the medical system's default is, well, if you haven't made a decision, we're gonna do everything because we don't want you to die and then regret it, so to speak. So they don't make a decision, they get in a crisis. That has its own complications. Then over the next few days, they get the tracheostomy. That's less desirable, people don't adapt as well, they end up in the hospital longer, they're more prone to pneumonia when that sort of thing happens. But even worse, if they don't make a decision, they may uh, uh, have an event, um, something goes down the wrong pipe, they get a bad pneumonia, and suddenly they're not with oxygen and they get some brain damage or worse, they die, and that's not what they wanted. So we try and avoid those terrible things happening.